Welcome to Physics Essentials. In this video, we will be looking at how to find the gradient of a graph. This is the final video of three videos where we are looking at the simple pendulum graphs, which is a part of the CSEC physics syllabus. So let's get right into it. We first want to define what is what do we mean by gradient or slope of a graph. The gradient or slope of a straight line graph is defined as the ratio of the vertical distance to the horizontal distance. It is also a measure of how steep the line is. So your gradient is measuring how the your line or your straight line graph is rising compared to how it's running. So your vertical distance would be the distance from on your y-axis and the horizontal distance would be the distance on your x-axis. So that is why when we're calculating the gradient for a straight line graph, we are dividing the difference in the y values divided by the difference in the x values because it is a rise divided by the run. So the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Please note that it is y subscript 2 and not y squared. Several persons tend to think that it is y squared and then they start squaring the y values and squaring the x values. No, it is a subscript 2 and a subscript 1 just to differentiate between the two values. Now there are certain guidelines you want to consider when you're finding the gradient or slope of a straight line graph. The first one is you select any two points that fall exactly on your line of best fit. Then you want to ensure that these points are far apart so that you at least have an average sized triangle. And then you will find the coordinates for these points and substitute them into your formula. That's the formula you're seeing on the screen. Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. So let's look at our previous example. So this was the question we have been working. We had completed the table and we did go through how we would plot the graph of length of the pendulum versus period squared. And if you have not seen that video, you want to check out the video before this one that is entitled how to plot graphs. So now we're looking at how to find the slope or the gradient of the graph and please be familiar with the two terms you can be asked either of them to find the gradient or to find the slope it's referring to the same thing so let's look at our graph and find the slope of the graph so here we have our graph it is length versus period squared so we have length on our y-axis and period squared on our x-axis then we would have drawn our best fit line and now we're going to look closely at our best fit line to select two points that fall exactly on this line now you want to select points that are outside of your data points some persons for ease of calculations they select points that they would have plotted and by points that you would have plotted I'm referring to these X's those are your data points those are the points you would have plotted based on the values you have in your table when you are finding your gradient try as much, much as possible not to use these points select any other point that fall on your best fit line and remember the points that you are selecting they must be exactly on your best fit line. So I would have selected these points, one right here and another one right here. So after we select the points that fall directly on our best fit line, we're now going to find the coordinates for these points. So now I would highlight the coordinates for these points. So this is Y2 and this is Y1. This is X2 and this is X1. Now, Y2 is usually the larger of the two Y values and X2 is usually the larger of the two X values. But if you should have them the reverse, your answer will be the same 
because the negative values that you would get, they would cancel each other. So once you have your line sloping like this, you're going to get a positive value for your gradient. And therefore, Y2 is going to be the larger of the two values, and X2 is going to be the larger of the two values. So we're going to find the coordinates for these points that we would have selected. So the point right here, Y2 is 0 0.7. So you can see we draw lines to see exactly where these points fall. So it's 0 0.7, and the other one is 0 0.25 because it is halfway between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 so it's 0 0.25 so x2 we can clearly see that is 2.8 x1 however some persons will probably have to count so this is 0 0.4 halfway between here would be 0 0.2 so it's 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 1 1.2 so that means x1 is 1 or 1 1.0 so let's do that again y2 is 0 0.7 y1 is 0 0.25 because it's halfway between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 x2 is 2.8 but x1 is 1 now how did we how do we know that it's 1 we can According to our scale, we can see the values that we're increasing by. So we look right here is 0, right here is 0 0.2, halfway between 0 and 0 0.4 is 0 0.2, this is 0 0.4, right here would be 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. So it's 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2, that gives us 1. 1 plus 0 0.2 gives us 1.2 and so on. So right at this point, it means that x1 is 1 or 1 1.0. So we have identified the values for our points that we would have selected. Now you want to highlight this on your graph so that when whoever is looking at your graph, they can see the points that you would have selected to find your gradient. So you highlight it as shown. Then you would complete your triangle. So now you're going to complete your triangle and you look at the triangle. It looks like it's an average size triangle. It's not small, right? So this is okay. Then we're going to now calculate our gradient. So we would have selected our points, found the coordinates for points that we would have selected and these points fall exactly on our best fit line and they are not plotted points so remember you're not using plotted points then we're simply going to substitute these values into our formula to find the gradient so y2 is 0 0.7 y1 is 0 0.25 x2 is 2.8 and x1 was 1.0 or simply 1 Notice how we kept our units. So on our y-axis, the unit is meters. On our x-axis, the unit is seconds squared. So we keep our units so that we can identify the unit for our gradient. So given that on the y-axis is zero is meters, and the answer that we get after subtracting is 0 0.45, so that's 0 0.45 meters, and the answer that we get for x values after subtracting is 1.8 seconds squared. Then we would have our answer being 0 0.25 meters per second squared. So this is the value for our gradient. And it is, that would be your answer, 0 0.25 meters per second squared. And you want to, as I said before, keep your units. That will be all for today. Thank you so much for watching.